of Brock Purdy. I know there are huge, huge question marks about whether Trey Lance is going to be the guy. Yeah. Who better to learn from for Brock Purdy than a guy like Aaron Rodgers? If this happens, the New York Jets no longer exist as a franchise. Yeah. I think we should have all seen this coming. To be honest, I didn't, but I think we all should have had an idea that this could happen. Aaron Rodgers hasn't been traded yet. So it was only a matter of time before another team pulled up and said, hey, you know what? Maybe we'll give you some additional capital in order to get Aaron Rodgers. And that's what the rumors are suggesting. Before we get to the content, once Aaron Rodgers does get traded, we are giving away $120 to any of my followers that retweet the tweet in front of you. Now that we get all that out of the way, work. When it comes to shopping for jewelry, especially as a gift, let me give you some advice. I, I, I have, I, I don't, I don't know anything about jewelry, so I can't really give you guys any advice. I'm just a horrible gift giver. I mean, on Valentine's Day, I bought my girlfriend this Cuban link chain, which looked better on me than on her. Now, I wish I had known about Blue Nile and their products beforehand, because I could have gotten my partner a more fitting gift, like these lovely eternity necklaces that they have available on their website. Or I could have selected from their assortment of earrings. Hell, they even allow you to build your own diamond jewelry or your own earrings and pendants, which is why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Blue Nile. BlueNile.com is the original online jeweler, and they're committed to ensuring that the highest ethical standards are observed when sourcing diamonds and jewelry. When you commit to a piece, so does Blue Nile, and you get guaranteed service and repair for life. Every order is insured and arrives in discreet packaging, so no one will ever find out what's inside. And right now they're hooking up my subscribers fat. Just go to BlueNile.com and use my promo code microphone to get $50 off of a purchase of $500 or more, or just click the link in the description. And thank you, Blue Nile for the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? The Aaron Rodgers situation has gotten very interesting. I mean, typically in a scenario where you see a player who is clearly being moved on from, which in this case, that's the situation that Aaron Rodgers is in. The Green Bay Packers want to put Jordan Love under center next season because he's going into his fourth year in the NFL and his rookie contract is about to expire. So it's about time to figure out whether or not he's the answer under center. So it makes a lot of sense. Whenever you see a player like Aaron Rodgers in the situation that he's in and the fact that the team agrees it's time to move on from Aaron Rodgers, you'd expect a trade to come together relatively quickly. I'd say almost as quickly as when Aaron Rodgers announced on the Pat McAfee show that he wanted to continue playing football and he wanted to play football for the New York Jets. Yeah, you know, I think since Friday, I made it clear that my intention was to play and my intention was to play for the New York Jets. Now, here's what's interesting. The last time we covered this entire scenario, it seemed like Aaron Rodgers Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers stopped focusing on trying to get Aaron Rodgers traded to the New York Jets and instead decided to take some jabs at one another. In the case of Aaron Rodgers, he pulled off one of his signature moves, leaving out very important details to create a specific narrative. In this particular case, Aaron Rodgers stated that he wished the Green Bay Packers told him that they wanted to move on from him. When I came out of the darkness, something changed. I'm not exactly sure what that was, but something changed. I just think I wish that in the beginning of the offseason that had been the conversation. But on the side of the Green Bay Packers, and here's where Aaron Rodgers is just so unapologetically himself, they tried calling Aaron Rodgers over and over again, and Aaron Rodgers would not pick up the phone. He comes out a couple weeks ago and says you basically went behind his back to shop him, and he didn't seem too pleased from your perspective. How did the last couple of months kind of transpired. Yeah, I didn't really take his comments like that, and it's certainly not true. I mean, I think, you know, as we got out of the off season or after the season, and we, we had a good conversation, um, and then you know we'll, we're going to have some follow up conversations. And our inability to reach him or for him to respond in any way, I think at that point, then we just kind of had to, we had to, I had to do my job and kind of reach out and understanding that a trade could be possible uh, and see who was interested, but that shopping was never really part of that. And this just made me really appreciate Aaron Rodgers because I don't care if he got vaccinated or not, but I thought it was really funny when they asked him if he did get vaccinated. Are you vaccinated and what's your stance on, on vaccinations? 
Yeah, I've been immunized. Which was really funny because he's saying, Yeah, I've gotten vaccinated before at some point in my life. Not necessarily this vaccine, but I've been immunized. So it was just very true to Aaron Rodgers' character and personality to go about it in this way. But in a larger scale, this is probably causing a ton of anxiety for New York Jets fans. Primarily because as of today, Aaron Rodgers is still technically a member of the Green Bay Packers. This is because the Green Bay Packers and the New York Jets can't agree to trade compensation. This is because the Green Bay Packers made a horrific mistake last offseason when they decided to bring back Aaron Rodgers. And to be honest, anyone could have told you that. For some reason, the Green Bay Packers thought that despite trading Devontae Adams and losing their only game in the playoffs against the six-seeded San Francisco 49ers, bear in mind that the Green Bay Packers were a one seed during Devontae Adams' final year on the roster. They felt like a downgrade on the offense was going to result in Aaron Rodgers potentially getting his third straight MVP instead of trading Aaron Rodgers when he won back-to-back -back MVPs. Last offseason, you could have probably gotten two first-round picks for him. That combined with the capital that you received when trading Devontae Adams, which was a 2022 first-round pick and a 2022 second-round pick, would have created a great situation in order to ensure that Jordan Love has some studs playing around him. You also get an extra year of Jordan Love on a rookie-scale contract. And to be honest, last year, Jordan Love looked more than ready. Instead, the Green Bay Packers brought back Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers had to learn how to make it work with a brand new wide receiver room. And unfortunately, he didn't win a third straight MVP. As a matter of fact, he didn't look nearly as good last year. Some people are even convinced that he could be washed. I'm not one of those people, but I could understand why that narrative exists. The Green Bay Packers are hell bent on trying to get a similar return to what they would have gotten last offseason for him. But you didn't sell high on Aaron Rodgers' value. You held him too long. As a result, his value took a tumble. And that's why the Green Bay Packers and the New York Jets can't agree on to trade compensation. It's a game of leverage, and really nobody knows who has the leverage here. The Green Bay Packers know that they have Aaron Rodgers under contract technically, but the New York Jets know that Aaron Rodgers wants out of Green Bay, and he has about one, maybe two more years left in the tank. You're not going to give up a first round pick for that type of player, and I could understand that. Well, it seems like the Green Bay Packers have a brand new card to play in order to really show how much leverage they have against the New York Jets. And we heard this originally from the Carton Show, but we also heard it from the Pat McAfee Show and Mike Greenberg. So I'll bring you the very first source we got this from the Carton Show. And Aaron Rodgers would absolutely want to play for this franchise. San Francisco 49ers. They have Trey Lance coming off a broken ankle. Uh -huh. They've got Brock Purdy yeah. and they signed Sam Darnold. Mm -hmm. They do not have a quarterback right now. And Pat McAfee and company actually could buy that this is happening, or this is all a collaborative effort to really show the Jets how much leverage the Packers have. So according to all of these sources, the San Francisco 49ers might be interested in swinging a trade for Aaron Rodgers. Now, here's what's interesting about the situation. One, San Francisco 49ers were interested in Aaron Rodgers two seasons ago when they were about to trade up to the number three overall pick for Trey Lance during the 2021 NFL Draft, they originally called the Green Bay Packers to see whether or not they'd be interested in trading Aaron Rodgers for the number three overall pick. So comical to me, man. Like, you're seeing how much Aaron Rodgers' value got reduced each and every offseason. It's normal. It makes a lot of sense. But the Green Bay Packers essentially went from potentially getting the number three overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft to potentially a second round pick or a couple of conditional picks. Once the Green Bay Packers Packers told the San Francisco 49ers that they're not interested. They, of course, went ahead and drafted Trey Lance. Trey Lance finally got to start last season, but he will get injured in the middle of the season. Thankfully, they drafted Brock Purdy in the 2022 NFL draft. And he had a Cinderella run, but he got injured as well. Now, there are some questions about what the San Francisco 49ers are going to look like at the quarterback position. Currently, they have Brock Purdy, who reportedly looks like he's playing with a robot arm. At least that's what we're hearing. They also have Trey Lance, who didn't necessarily look that prolific when he was on the field, but of course, he's still relatively young and still has a lot of developing to do. And more recently, they went ahead and signed Sam Darnold. Now, I don't think any team that has Super Bowl aspirations is necessarily thinking that Sam Darnold is going to take them to the promised land, but it does make sense that you're seeing this report because currently, the reason why the New York Jets and the Green Bay Packers can't agree on a trade package is because they don't agree on Aaron Rodgers' 
value the Green Bay Packers want a first round pick and the New York Jets don't want to give up a first round pick, especially not the 13th overall pick. So all the San Francisco 49ers really have to do is pull up and just beat the New York Jets offer. It shouldn't be that hard. They just have to give up a future first round pick. And if there's anything that we've learned from the San Francisco 49ers, it's that they really don't value their first round picks as much as they should. I'm sorry, but trading all that capital for Trey Lance so far, I'm not necessarily sure how I feel about the return thus far. Obviously that could change. I feel like it was a little overly aggressive for their project QB, but who knows? Maybe he develops into a superstar. If the 49ers were to trade for Aaron Rodgers, it would make sense because it would still fit the developmental timeline of Trey Lance. Trey Lance has two more years left on his rookie scale contract, and that's before we bring up the potential fifth year option. Plenty of time for him to sit down an additional season and watch the way Aaron Rodgers prepares. Could be good for him. I don't necessarily know what Brock Purdy's future is going to look like. That's a different question. We don't know how he's going to look like once he's healthy, but in the case of the San Francisco 49ers, I can imagine this being a bit of a dream scenario for them. You could make a very legitimate argument that the one piece that was holding them back this entire time was the quarterback position. And I got to give it to Kyle Shanahan. He's been able to make lemonade out of lemons each and every time, no matter who was under center at the quarterback position. I mean, obviously Trey Lance was still a little raw, of course, but Kyle Shanahan was able to make it to the NFC Championship with Jimmy Garoppolo at the helm and also with Brock Purdy at the helm. So I can imagine if you get a significant upgrade in the form of Aaron Rodgers, you might potentially finally get that elusive Lombardi trophy. Maybe Aaron Rodgers is able to make the throws that Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't able to make in the Super Bowl versus the Kansas City Chiefs. But at the same time, one has to wonder if the Green Bay Packers would be willing to trade Aaron Rodgers to the same conference. Well, here's the thing. How much longer is Aaron Rodgers going to play for? One year, maybe two years? I think at that point, you kind of let that bias go. It's not like you're giving a competing team in your conference a player that could potentially dominate the conference for the next 10 years, maybe one or two years, but that's if that even happens. At the end of the day, what do I think about all this? Well, I think this is just a gigantic leverage play from all of the people that are on team Aaron Rodgers. That's what I think. People want this trade to get done. I want this trade to get done. I want him to get traded to the Jets already because I know once Aaron Rodgers gets traded to the Jets, we find out what happens with DeAndre Hopkins, Odell Beckham Jr. The rest of the free agency finally comes together. We might get some more active days in this slower off season, slower than last season. So personally, I really want any type of trade to happen with the fact that you're seeing Pat McAfee, which is one of Aaron Rodgers' boys, really hype this up. Could also be momentum to try to put pressure on the Jets to up their offer potentially to trade for Aaron Rodgers. That's what I think is going on here. I wouldn't rule out the 49ers being interested in Aaron Rodgers, but at the same time, I think it's way more likely that they're trying to put more pressure on the New York Jets to make a deal. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about this. Do you think that the San Francisco 49ers could actually trade for Aaron Rodgers? Or do you think this is all a ploy by the media to put some pressure on the New York Jets? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.